Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about the interquartile range of a data set. So let's start off with the definition. I just did this and restarted it and had the same problem. Okay, so let's start off with the de definition. In the IQR, and this is how we write it, is a measure of spread in a data set. So you may look at that and have no idea what I'm talking about, but it measures the consistency. It measures the consistency see, of our data. Okay, And what the really important part of this is the middle It's the middle. Okay, it's the middle fifty percent of the data set. Okay, and if you're still not sure what it means, it kind of means this. When you find your five number summary, if this was your Q1 and this was your Q3, what it tells you is that. 50% of the data falls here. Okay, so this is very, very important because let's say Q1 was 5 and Q3 was 8. So basically, what that means that half of the data will fall in this section right here. Half the data will fall in this section, which is a relatively small distance. The IQ would, IQR would be 3 here, but it gives you an idea of the consistency of the data. Okay, Whereas if the Q1 was 15 and the Q3 was, let's say, 150, okay, so we could say the same thing. 50% of the data falls between these two things. Okay, but you have to you have to be really careful when you're talking about the IQR. A lot of people make the mistake and say, 50% of the data fall in the IQR. You can't say that because the IQR is just a number. You can't say that 50% of the data falls in a number. Okay, so when you're defining these later on, make sure you say the IQR is let's say three because the IQR would be three here, and then we'd say. 50, that means that 50% of the data falls between 5 and 8. Okay? So it's a measure spread in our data set. It measures the consistency of our data. Of course, the smaller IQR, which means the more consistent your data is. Okay. And I'm going to do this on the next page. And when do we use it? I'm going to do three now. We use it in general. In general, just means that. In general, this just basically means that not all cases, but we like using it for skewed data. Okay? And the reason is because the IQR resists outliers, which I'm going to do a whole video on that. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about here, go, you could see the video on how to do that. So when we talk about IQ, when we talk about the IQR, we generally want to, if you have your data skewed, you graph it, look at it. If it's skewed, in general, we want to talk use the median for a measure of central tendency, and we want to use the IQR for the amount of variability or the amount of error or how consistent our data is. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a small example um, on how to find the IQR by hand. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's move my calculator over. And I was going to put this stuff in before I started, but I'm going to forget. But I could speed it up. There we go. So if you look at our data, this is the number of times you hit the snooze button in the morning for the past two weeks. Okay, so I'm just going to second quit out of that. You don't necessarily have to do that. But 
Let's go ahead and do our same thing that we found the median, the mean, the five number summary. There is no calculator function. There's no calculator function that'll find the IQR. You have to use the formula. Okay? You have to use the formula. And the formula, which I didn't write on the first page, but the formula is the IQR equals Q3 minus Q1. It's just a it's just a range formula. You know, you know the range from like if I said find the range of this data set, you just find the largest data point which is six and subtract it from the smallest data point which is zero. So the range would be six. The inter interquartile range, I have to find these guys. I have to find Q3 and Q1. And the way we do that is one variable statistics stat. Go over to calc, hit enter. Our data is in list one, so I don't have to put a list two there. Hit enter. And I'm just going to scan down and look for Q1 and Q3. Okay, so our Q3 is 4. Our Q1 is 1. So our IQR is 3. IQR is 3. So what this tells us is that 50% of these numbers will fall between 1 and 4. Okay, so that's how we find the IQR. And you will be learning a lot more about the IQR in the days to come. Make sure you check out other videos about making box plots and outliers. Okay, that will all help you understand the idea of IQR. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it and have a nice day.